الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم ما عليكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد قال الله تعالى في الكتاب المجيد فرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد جئتمونا فرادا صدق الله العظيم بدر سيس من الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm going to paraphrase the Arabic portion of khutbah Indeed our praise to God Almighty who praise him who asks for his help who seek refuge in him from our inner soul and bad deeds Whomsoever God Almighty dies no one can astray whomsoever he does not die no one can die I bear witness no one is worthy of worship except God Almighty and Muhammad peace be upon him his servant and messenger peace and blessing upon him and his followers Believers have a conscious awareness of God, die not except total submission to God Almighty. For mankind have a conscious awareness of God. He has created you from a single soul, from that soul He made many pairs. Especially be dutiful to those whom you have mutual rights. Indeed, God is all watching. For believers have a conscious awareness of God, speak nothing but truth, so He can rectify your deeds, He can forgive your sins. The best among you is follow God Almighty and Muhammad, peace be upon Him. For today's khutbah, I have chosen a part of ayah from Surah Al-Anam, Surah number 6, verse number 94. I'm going to paraphrase the translation of that verse, that ayah that I have for today's khutbah. Indeed, for sure, you stand in front of Allah bare and alone. So as I mentioned in, in the previous khutbahs, in my humble opinion, the khutbah, the student of Islam, the khutbah is about what we have done in the past week, reflection upon it, and what we need to do in this coming week, and remind each other of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that part of the Jummah day that Allah wants us to get together for his zikr, for his reminder, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Jummah, Surah number 62. Ya ayyu so the day of Min Yom al the part of the day that you need to get together so you can, as a congregation prayer, you can understand and zikr and remind each other of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remind what the constant issues, the concerns, the community is going through. How can we stay focused? How can we stay focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What our deen is required of us in this condition? What we should do as a collective community, we need to remind each other of Allah's taqwa, Allah's reminder, Sunnah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what the khutbah is. And usually I try to take the topic which is related to that week. And I have chosen this ayah. The ayah presents the context where we're going to stand in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We'll be bare, naked, and we'll be alone. It doesn't matter where you look in Muslim Ummah today. Mankind is suffering at all, overall, but as Muslim Ummah, we're suffering a lot. As you and I speak here, we sit here in Alhamdulillah, the blessed place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somewhere a Muslim is dying at the hand of Muslim. <coughs> both sides are saying Allah Akbar, both sides are saying Taqbir, Allah Akbar. The most contentious issue, the most casualty that are happening right now are in Syria. Doesn't matter who kills who. But at the end of the day, the dead body belongs to our Muslim brother and sister. Those who were reciting Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. In that chaotic situation, coming home, that we are talk of the town, Muslims have been defamed, Islamophobia. In your own state here in Delaware, some senator and congressman walked away from the session where the Quran was recited. They said, We do not want to sit in the park and in the community where the Quran is recited because that's not a blessing. In this, this society, that happens. A couple of days ago, miles from here, a car was killed. These are things happening. What is our responsibility? What do I do? What can I do? Because Allah is summoning me individually. But this, as a collective um ummah, as a humanity, Allah wants us to be what? Part of our humanity, part of the mankind. But as Allah told his governor, that, you know, before you burn, the Ashtar, he said, you know, before you burn, you're going to find only two kinds of people. One is the people, your brother and sister in humanity, and your brother and sister in faith. That's it. That's what it is. That's what all the teaches us, all the limnas, limnas, mankind. 
But within mankind, we have our own family, which is what people have believed. The believers, the Mominim. What is our relationship to them? What is my responsibility in this chaotic situation? What do I do? Do I sit in a corner and complain? Brother, this is haram, this is bidah, this is shirat, this is kufur, everybody going to go to hell. No politics is bad, this is bad, Egypt is bad, Pakistan is bad, Syria is bad, this dress code is bad. Do I do that? Or do I just get involved and do what I, whatever I can do to the best of my ability to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We know from the Quran, as a book of history as well, there is never a when the punishment comes, it comes on the nation, on the Quran. But Allah wants individuals to stand up, individuals to be responsible. There is Qawm Ya'ad, Qawm Samud, Qawm Fir'aun, all those with the nation. When Allah's azab comes, it comes on a nation. When Allah wants at the day of judgment, He wants individuals to stand up and present their own books, what they have done. And that's something you and I need to talk about. The, the Islam has two prongs. What's the ibadat, worship, what's the ma'amilat, conduct, day-to-day -day dealings. The worship, we obviously worship only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we say, You alone, oh Allah, we worship. You alone, we ask for help. So worship aspect is directly between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the abadah. But when it comes to ma'amalat, the conduct, the day-to-day -day dealings, that's something we're all lacking. And that's where we need to focus. And at the day of judgment, the individual responsibility where we all are lacking is our dealing with the Hukul Ibadah aspect, with the people at large. That's something we're all lacking. When it comes to Ibadah, the worship, mashallah, we already know. You know, there are the young kids here, you know, three year, four year, five year old, ask them what's important, what's the pillar of Islam. They will tell you will them right away. They know what's important. That when it comes to Ibadah, the adults have researched, they follow one certain scholar. Inshallah, it's up to you, whoever you follow, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we come to the point that you say, no, this scholar is right, this book is right, this tafsir is right, this is haram, this is bidah, this is shirat, this is kufr. We come to that point when it comes to ibadah. That we start declaring each other that you're outside this norm, you're outside my group, us versus them mentality. When it comes to ibadah, we've gone that far. When it comes to mamala, we have no clue. And that's something we all need to work. This ayah says what? وَلَكَدْ جَيْتُمُونَ فُرَادًا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً You will come in front of me bare, naked, alone, the way I have created you in the first place. Think about it. What the Quran says. أَفَلَا يَتَقَبَّرُونَ سُرَةً نِسَاءً When are you going to ponder about this book? When are you going to pay attention to what this book is saying? When are you going to think about afalat akilun? When are you going to use your aql and wisdom? The ayah itself says, you're going to come in front of me, what? Kama khalaq nakum abbala marra. The way I have created you in the first place. In the first place, how? Have we paid attention? When we were created, we were what? Teeny tiny kid at the birth, we have no idea who we are. And yes, we were naked. I ask your mom, you will make it. And if you pay attention to the offspring, a child, a baby of a uh, human being, and baby of some mammal, let's talk about, you know, cow, a buffalo. Their babies at the birth, they try to get up. They crawl up a little bit, try to get up, and you know what? After three, four tries, they start crawling, they start walking. Have you noticed us as a human being? It takes us days. Months, we have an utter dependency on our surroundings. Our mother, our brothers, sisters, and all our life until you die, you have interdependency on somebody else has to bury you. You're naked, you're totally depending on somebody else. Even if you're adult, you're professor, engineer, lawyer, doctor, shopkeeper, you depend on somebody else. That's the way Allah has created the system. Wallahu khayru raziqeen. Allah is the best one who gives the risk. In Allah ala kulli shayin kaleer. Allah is qadr on everything. But the way he set it up the system, you depend on somebody else. That's the way life is. That's the way Allah wants us to do. At that time, there's the mercy of your mother. 
This only relationship, only relationship that in the world is unconditional. Every other relationship has condition. Brothers and sisters can fight. Spouses, they can divorce each other. But when it comes to mother and child, there's an unconditional relationship. There's no question about that. I haven't seen a mother who said, my child is ugly. Never. Because this is unconditional bond, and it's one part of rahmah of Allah, a teeny mini rahmah that comes to mother. But guess what? Your utter dependency on mother, your utter dependency at that situation you're surrounding, and your, all your life depends, even your janala, somebody else carry to bury you. This dependency, you know, Allah said, خَلَقْنَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَا كَمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً You will stand in front of me, in the bare, naked, alone, the way you were created alone. Even if you have a twin, still it's alone, one at a time. So Allah wants you to come in front of Him, one individual. And at that time Allah wants you to do what? Aisha Rasulullah Ta'ala asked, Ya Rasulullah, we're going to be naked? Yes. Rasulullah, we said, Aisha, at that time, the situation would be so drastic that you will have no idea. When deafening sound comes, you have no clue. You have no clue. That's the time you're standing in front of Allah again in the same scenario that you're by yourself, you're naked, and you have no idea what's going to happen to you. When you were born, you have no idea what's going to happen to you. You're going to die, you're going to survive, you're going to be handicapped, your mother going to love you, your mother might die at the time of you know, your birth, you have no idea, the uncle and aunts, people are going to take you, and they're going to adopt you, you're going to be thrown out somewhere in a foster room, you have no idea how you're going to end up. <coughs> but the surrounding dependency will bring you one way or other to your life in this dunya. Same way at that day you're standing up alone and naked, you have no idea what's going to happen to you, you're going to end up in Jannah or Jahannam. You don't know what's going to happen, but you're directly at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. In dunya you had mercy, indirect mercy, obviously all mercy of Rahman and Rahim come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the head your mercy was what? Through your mother. There your mercy is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have no clue what's going to happen to you. But guess what? At that time also your dependency was people that you surrounded in this dunya. That's something you all have a problem. There are more than 55, 57 Muslim countries. Every single Muslim country have exact same dilemma, same problem. When it comes to Hukuk al it's us versus them. It's greed. It's ego. Me, I am, my profession, my neighbor, my family, my wife, my spouse. This my, my, I, I has taken us off track. When we have humanity at large and my dependency in this humanity and this is humanity, my depending on dependency and their day of judgment. Once we realize that factor, life is very simple. Brother, I don't know what people will say about me. I don't know, brother, I want to be really good khatib. I want to be a good teacher. I want to be a good professor. I don't know what people will think, brother. I want to have extraordinary wedding for my son, even though I have to refinance my house because what people are going to think. I, ha I have seen people in that kind of situation. Taking colors and soothe and interest by having lavish wedding for son or daughter. What people are going to think? Let me tell you what people are going to think. Brother, half of them don't even know who you are. Other half, the day you die, it might be a working day, they won't even show up your janazah. Those who really care about you know you very well. The worst, the best thing they're going to think about you is what? Inna lillahi wa inna That's all they're going to say about you. So worry about that day when you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did you do in the Kukul Ibad people's right? That's something we all are lacking and that's what our problem is. The most conservative survey in America, we are 2.5 2, 2 million, 3 million. Imagine if a 3 million are Muslim with the most educated faith in America. The highest earning per capita. The great no crime ratio. The divorces. We are perfect community as a faith. And we are, majority of us are working. Which means that we have interaction with boss, subordinate, surrounding, neighbors. As I mentioned before, that at least 10 people's livelihood directly or direct, indirectly depends on me. Every single one of us. It depends on your accountant, your lawyer, your school ch children's teacher, karate teacher, swimming teachers, you know, your neighbors, the grocery, the halal meat shop. If these 10 people stand up on the Day of Judgment and say, Allah, I have no idea about Deen. 
Where are you? Where am I? Do we need to give some brother salam alaikum? Here, the Quran, read it please. Next time when I order for the goat, please make sure we will talk about Surah Nasa. Do we? No. Khatam Allah ala kulubihim. Allah has seen their hearts up to Allah. But my job is that I am punctual, I am on time. When I pay, I pay. When I told them I'm going to show up at 2.30, I am there at 2.30. This is the treat, this is the dealing. Because you know what? He's a shopkeeper knows. This brother order halal meat is always there at 2.30. I need to finish his job first. Go home and check your airlines today, the country that you come from, majority of us are immigrants. The airlines have recording, the flight is tomorrow 2 o'clock, you will say, we apologize for delay. But he's saying, why? When your being tells us what? Everything is punctual. Every single pillar of Islam has timing. Matthew Ramadan is coming up. Try to break your Ramadan a little late, you know what? Half an hour Allah. So I want to say hungry for half an hour, why not? Extra. Instead of 8.44, let me break at 9.15. No, it doesn't work like that. Fajr, you know what? I'm going to pray a little late. Why not? Every single thing has a timing. Hajj, go now. Why not? There's nobody there. It's easy. Why? Everything has a timing. But when it comes to Muslim life, this is, there is a prevailing joke among people from subcontinent, India, Pakistan. We all born half an hour late. Everything is late. Why? These conducts are the one that Allah will ask us. Let me give you an example. The less say that your boss, again, nice like a there's not no example like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But just the Quran also says in Surah Al-Fal that you have to talk with the Dalil, you have to talk with the evidence and proof. So let me give you an evidence, an example. The less say that your boss picks you up, ten of us randomly, a couple of sisters, kids, elderly person, and then picks us, ten of us, and take us to somewhere in general. So this is the place that you guys are gonna be, and no conversation. There's no cell phone, no Skype, nothing whatsoever, and you have no idea where you are. And it gives you a small menu, and says, instructions say, this is the instruction, and instructions are so easy to follow. Anybody, I mean, 10 of them can read easily. So read these instructions, and I'm going to send somebody to pick you up. But I'm not going to tell you the time when I'm going to come pick you up, or who's going to come pick you up. But what I want you to do, read these instructions, which every single one of them you can read, even children can read and understand. Ten of you have a task to do what? Plant a tree, the trees are already here, small nursery. Pick a tree, but you need to make sure the tree you pick must give fruit. And you need to plant the tree. And the ultimate criteria is when I come back and send somebody, I'll ask at random, what do you think about number three? All nine have to say he was excellent or she was excellent. What do you think about number nine? All other nine have to say he was a great person, she was a great person. If single one of them say he's bad, he's dead himself, he didn't work with us, he picked the tree, he was fighting, he was reading himself, he thought he knows better than us, you're going to be burned alive in front of those ten. Let me repeat the instruction. Small menu, everybody can read it, you are at the place, they have no idea, and only communication you can have is directly with the boss. You can ask something, that's about it. But boss is not going to tell you how to plant, which tree to plant, because it's already the menu. But when boss sends somebody to pick you up, he's going to ask, what do you think about number three, six, number four? All nine have to say, he's excellent. One of them say, no, he was a little rough. You're going to be buried, or you're going to be burnt alive. My question to you, what would you do in that situation? How hard would you try to make sure you plant it quickly because you don't know when the boss is going to show up. Make sure that you share the manual, the instruction with everybody and make it so easy for everybody to understand. You will make sure all nine love you to death because your life depends on other nine. If they say something wrong, you're going to be burned alive. Wouldn't you try hard? I will because my life depends on it. <coughs> Because my life depends on that nine people. If one of them, even children, a child there, a lady, an elderly person doesn't understand me, I need to make sure that I get along well. When boss comes back, I'm going to be dead. If they don't agree with me, right? Well, take all this instruction. The manual is Quran. Instead of 10, you have 10 million people that you affect directly and indirectly. Sky, media, at least 10 your surrounding, at least according to Imam Shafi, 40 your neighborhoods are your neighbor, 40 houses in your neighbor are your neighborhoods. The tree that you plant, the ilm, 
The Prophet said in Muslim hadith, hadith number 1631, the three things when you've done, you're dead. The three, three things that will stay alive and keep on continuing. The knowledge that you spread, the benefit. O Lord, that makes dua for you. Sadaqa jariya. The tree is sadaqa, the fruit is what? Sadaqa jariya. The tree is the knowledge that you spread. The treatment that nine have to say good things about you, you know why? Because these nine will stand up on day of judgment. And at that time, one of them say that this person was mean to me. Guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when it comes to hukuk al my right, you and I will work it out. When it comes to hukuk al Abd, it didn't say hukuk al-Mu'mineen, no hukuk al-Muslimin, no hukuk al-Egyptian, no Misri, no Pakistani, it doesn't say that. It says hukuk al when it comes to people's right, you go back and ask that person, if he forgives you, if she forgives you, then come to me. And I will consider it. Guess what? Those nine that were going to make your life miserable and going to make you burnt alive, those nine at the day of judgment can be your neighbor, can be the meat guy, can be the grocery, the giant store, the Macy guy. Those nine stand up and say, yes, we never ever read the, the book. We never got the, you know, the Manshur, the criteria and structure from him, we have no idea. And whenever he gave the book, he obviously was very aggressive, he said, I know better, and he has to have a this kind of dress code, you need to have to have a beer, you need to have a hijab, only those people can talk about this book, nobody else can talk about it. That's what he used to tell us, we got scared. We never planned anything which we thought we have enough time, we'll plan next season. Did we? This dunya is exactly the same scenario. We have Quran as instruction. We have surrounding 10 people are already here. Your neighbor, atheist, agnostic, Muslim, that's our neighbor. If this, the tree is the ilm, the tree is the sadaqa jariya, we need to do it. And the dunya that your life is going to go, that life in Surah Allah, khayrun wa abqa, forever and ever will last. Let me give you authentic hadith. It's authentic hadith in Muslim. Silsalat al hadith al sayyah the authentic hadith. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked companion, do you know who is bankrupt? Atadurun mal muflis. Do you know who is muflis? Who is gharib? Who is bankrupt? Sahaba say, Allah doesn't have money. Simple answer, sure, why not? The bankruptcy concept works when your assets are low and your debts are high. You have to earn $300 every month, but you need to pay 500 bucks somehow. But 200 shortage every month, you're never going to catch up. And eventually you'll declare bankruptcy. Because you're never going to catch up. So assets are low, liability is high. That's called bankruptcy. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, who's bankrupt? So how was it? Ya Rasulullah, who does not have enough assets? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, 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 no. You know why? Because the dirham, dinar, rupees, dollar, pound is a currency in this dunya. Currency over there is what? Amal is Saleh. My favorite surah. Imam Shafi said, you know, this is the best surah. Entire Quran is best. But Walasan. In the Lazin Amanu wa Amilu Salihat. Watawasa will haq. Watawasa will sub. The vow is connecting four responsibility. One alone responsibility will not take you anywhere. All four have to be connected. So Amal is Saleh. That's the currency at the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, person will come. And when I read this hadith, it makes me nervous, very nervous. Because all we need to know about hadith is this, is this authentic? That's all we need to make sure. The content is authentic, the narration is authentic, the matan itself, the word, the Prophet Wasallam say this. And that's all we need to find out. Once we know this is authentic, then we cannot question. Maybe it's wrong, maybe right. No, 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 it is right. You don't understand it. Only Allah will. And Muhammad Rasulullah will tell you what's right or wrong. If he said it, uh, Muhammad Rasulullah said it, and it's authentic, done deal. This is authentic hadith, it's the Muslim. This makes me nervous, you know why? Prophet Rasulullah said the Muflis is on, who will come on a day of judgment with what? Psalm, Ramadan, Siyam, fasting, Zakat, and Salat. He will come with all and proud. In this criteria, in this dunya, we say, yeah, that brother and that sister was in masjid, alhamdulillah, all the time. Yes, they give the donation to masjid. Yes, they do zakat, mashallah. And Ramadan, aftari, tarawi, their hair, alhamdulillah. In all our small mentality and perception and judgmental perception, which shouldn't be there, only Allah can judge. But in our own perception, we think, yeah, that brother made it, slam dunk. 
at the day of judgment, he will come with some salat, he will be there, and guess what will happen? Allah will say, God is, the person will be happy. Allah will say, look back, look behind. There is a line. Those are the people that you trample upon their rights. Those are the ibad, those are the people. Ask them for forgiveness. They'll turn around and say, what can I do? They say, we need these, the currencies only. What? Not dead on dollar, but not pawn. Currencies, deeds, we don't have deeds. So you will start giving them. Ten here, five here, three here, hajj here, zakat here, swam here, salat here. Kept on giving, kept on giving. Line is long. Because he thought, when I come to masjid, I give good speech. People follow me, I got long beard. I graduate from Azad, Allah Akbar. Slam dunk, no. Because the interaction in this dunya with other people, that's what matters. That's what matters, which we all are lacking. At that time, the line is so long, it gives up all those things. And say, oh Allah, I don't have anything left now. Allah said, take the big bad deeds now. He'll keep on taking bad deeds. And Prophet Muhammad said, he will be loaded with bad deeds and thrust into Jahannam. That is the muflis, that is the debtor, that is the bankrupt. Brother, sister, worry about that day. We have the cop died here. How many people from Masjid send a thank you letter to the cops? The solidarity went to this house. Brother, astaghfirullah, is not Muslim, really? Then why should we get involved? Really? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up for Janaza of Jahudan, the Jewish lady when she was passing Janaza, he got up to the Sahaba and said, Ya Rasulullah, do you know who she was? Who was her? I don't know. Ya Rasulullah, she was a Jewish lady, her dead body was passing. What did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? It was a human being who died. What are you guys talking about? This is a cop somewhere within a mile radius, isn't it? Died. How many of us send a letter to the police? They must have some sort of donation for him. Usually they have. Did we donate? Did we? But we complain, brother, they don't love us, they don't care about us, they hate us. But I didn't get a job because my name is Muhammad. Do you live life of Muhammad? Do you live life of Muhammad? At the age of 40, the first thing he established before he said, do you know who I am? He said, yes, we know. You sure? You sure? You sure? Yes, say who? Sadduq al most trustworthy. You sure? Let me give you an example. If I say something like this, there are people coming, you will believe. Yes, we will. That's called credibility before we open our mouth for whatever profession we have. The profession that we have, only profession in this dunya is deen and tabliq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we have that credibility? No brother, they, they hate us, they don't love us. Do you have love? The senator, those who walk away from the chamber, did you send them an email? Did you invite them to your house? Did you talk to them? Complain brother, they don't like us. But other hundreds, and I don't know how many you have. But two walked away, others were there. Did you appreciate them? Did you acknowledge them? No. Why not? But read the history of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Masaka, Medina, Odebiya, packed after packed after packed with Mushrikeen, the Kuffar, the worst people. He made the deals with them, worked with them. Those people without sword, without any bomb, without any suicide, they came from minority, they become the majority religion. And they become what? Umar bin Khattab, the supreme power, the superpower that you can imagine today, from Ethiopia to Russia, was Umar bin Khattab. Tell me, when did he blow up? When did he have a suicide jacket? People were running. But from there, because of this aspect of Hukukul Ibad, the treatment of people, they got together, they established credibility. People say, you know, these are the people we want to love. Tell me a single person who was killed in Malaysia and Indonesia when Islam spread there. Not, no army went there. So how? One of the biggest Muslim countries, what? Indonesia. How? Because of trade, because of credibility. The so Muslim went in there and said, yeah, these are the great people. Never lie. Always on time. Come to it. Treat each other with respect. Always honest. Do we? This is something we so at the end of the day, individual responsibility, that's what matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anam, uh, Surah uh, Al uh, the ayah that I have quoted, Surah number 6, verse 94. Also in Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, verse 95, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will come in front of me individually. So worry about that day. Surah Abasa, Surah number 80, I don't have much time. Surah number 80, verse 34, read that. Yoma yafarul mara min abiyya wa So this is the ayah, tells you that day you will look at your wife, you look at your husband, you look at your mother, mother will look at you, your brother will look at you, your father will look at you, you will run from each other. 
That's the day we need to be concerned. Those 10 people, example that I gave it to you, that can make you or that can break you. Your life in this dunya depends on those 10 people. That life here, hereafter, Hayro Wabaka, also depends on those 10 people. The 10 mean the people that you're surrounding. Go out there and talk. Also, Sadiq Ajayya, the tree that I talked about, this masjid is moving in month of Ramadan into the new masjid. Help people, they need donation. Sadiq Ajayya, the tree, remember the plants, the fruit. Also, they need labor, physical, moving desks, moving places, uh, things from this masjid to other masjid. Help them before Ramadan, depending on moon site. May 26 and May 27. Again, we're going to have another huge issues. Brother, we didn't see the sun, we didn't see the moon, we see in Saudi Arabia, we're going to break. Allahu Akbar! If this thing was that important, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Quran says, Surah Maida al yawm akmatu lakum deenukum. If the deen is complete, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't know the sun and moon. But we have issues. Why? Because Allah left up to us ijtihad. Think about it. Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, verse 36. Surah Allah will ask, I will ask you for the wisdom and aql and fam. How do you use? So Allah left it for us. How did we do it? We're going to have Musajid here. The sister will pray Eid today and brother will pray Eid tomorrow. Allahu Akbar. And we'll talk about unity. So at least get together and have consist. If you haven't contributed for donation for that cop, I don't know that cop. I never met him. I'm not here to solicit for him. But I'm here to speak on behalf of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he stood up for the Yahudan dead person, we have a de dead person next door in our neighborhood. We need to donate. We need to send them a letter. We need to send them flower. We need to work together. And that's what our deen is asking. It's called Hodal Lin Nas. It's for the people. That's what we need to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom, vision, strength. That we love each other. We care about each other. We look beyond facial expression. We look beyond the jalbab, hijab. We look beyond the color and language. We come together at the humanity at large for the betterment of humanity. We come together on one DNA. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah wa laikata yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Salaam 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 Khatam Al-Nabiyyin, Rahmat Al-Alameen Rabbana Aatina Fid Dunia, Salaam Wa Fil Akhirati, Salaam Wa Akhirati, Salaam Wa Akhirati, Salaam ربنا ازلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكن لنا من الخاسرين اللهم ان نسالك من الخير كله ونعوذ بك من شر كله امين ثم امين يا رب العالمين حكم السلام